This is Beretta, ADX Cheetah, versus Beretta, 92FS, versus Beretta, 92X Compact. A comparison. Portions of this video were filmed at the beautiful Banner shooting range. It was a hot, humid day there at the range, so there's a little less background noise than we normally contend with, luckily. And now, let's hit the range! Alright, totally forgot our camera setup today. So we are rolling with cell phone video. You'll have to forgive us, there's no target cam. I'll take pictures of the targets at the end. There'll probably be less footage as a result. Let's get to it. We're comparing today the ADX Cheetah against the 92FS against the 92X Compact. Let's do a magazine through each firearm at the bottom left of our targets. We have uh, individual target papers for each firearm, five targets on each paper. Bottom left target will be our initial targets here. We'll do our first shot, double action with all three firearms. Here we go, starting with the Cheetah. Good group out there. You can't see it, but you'll see it at the end. I think our 92 FS and 92 Compact only have 10 in each magazine. I tend to do 10 just for ease of counting and whatnot. Here we go. Bottom left target of our right hand target. That was terrible. We gotta do that one again. Okay, that was better. Okay, with our compact, we're gonna shoot at the top set of targets bottom left again first shot will be double action here we go Looking at our targets after our first set of magazines, I think we have fairly comparable groups. The one thing that I think is very noticeable, even without having target cam with us here today, is you can clearly see on our 92FS and our 92 compact target, which of the rounds was our uh, double action trigger shot. And in fact, on our 92FS one, that far right shot that is our double action shot was so bad I had to do a second one over because I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's all on me. We got to redo that. Which the second one is the one that's about six inches to the left, about the same height. I have not shot the 92FS nearly as much as I should or in a while, so I shot it quite poorly here today. How it hit on target is not representative of how accurate that firearm can be. That's all on me. Now looking at the bottom right target now, Here's where we can see we fired our next set of magazines off camera. And again, I'm going to say comparable accuracy, maybe slightly better groups, fairly well on target, we'll say for me. Not the greatest groups ever, but far from the worst. Let's move on and talk about the numbers on these firearms now. While we have done some reviews on these firearms in the past, 
this is going to be one of those comparison videos where we are going to go into the numbers a little more than we do in some of our other comparison videos. And I think that is because the numbers on these firearms is where a lot of people are going to be interested in the differences, in my opinion. So let's get to those now. The Beretta ADX Cheetah is 6.8 inches long, 4.9 inches high, 1.4 inches wide, and weighs in at 25 ounces unloaded. The Beretta 92FS is 8.5 inches long, 5.4 inches high, 1.372 inches wide, and weighs in at 34.4 ounces unloaded. You will hear me refer to this firearm as the full size in this video. That is not what FS stands for. If you're curious about that, I will let you Google that on your own. I don't know if I know the actual real story behind that. The Breda 92X Compact is 7.75 inches long, 5.25 inches high, 2.92 inches wide, and weighs in at 27.2 ounces unloaded. Now let's start our side-by-side -side comparisons with the 92FS versus the Cheetah. Now I think it's interesting on paper the Cheetah is technically wider though in the hand and visually I don't think that's the case. Let's get to some of these other pictures where that the size difference is much more noticeable. With the Cheetah on top of the full size we can see that the full size has a noticeably longer slide and barrel. With the full size on top of the Cheetah and the Cheetah virtually disappears. From the top down the firearms look very similar in width though you can see again how much longer the full size is compared to the Cheetah. And from the grip view, you can see that the full size has the longer grip, maybe not quite as much longer as shown in this image. It's a little hard to hold these firearms and show that exactly right, but longer in the grip, and to me it looks even slightly wider, like fractionally slightly wider. And now let's compare the ADX Cheetah against the 92X Compact. With the Cheetah on top of the Compact, one thing you can barely see in the shadow of my palm is that the compact has a longer slide than the cheetah, but they're otherwise pretty similar. With the compact on top of the cheetah, the cheetah virtually disappears. Let's take a close up look at the grip here. With both firearms having the Vertec grip, I think the biggest difference in the hand comes down to if you have pinky extensions on your magazine or not. As you can see here, the 92X grip is probably a little deeper, but otherwise it's very similar in width and length. Now let's take a look at the from the grip view. They look, the compact looks longer. That's a, by, a byproduct of how I'm holding these firearms. I would pay attention more to the width here and how similar they are in width. Now here's a top down view. And I would say it reinforces the idea that the slide length and barrel length are going to be the biggest differences in terms of the size of these firearms. And finally, let's take a quick look at a comparison between the 92X Compact and the 92 full size. Now these firearms are fairly similar in size. With the Compact on top of the full size, they look much more similar in size than they are in terms of slide length and barrel length. With the full size on top of the compact, I think it's beginning to become more noticeable, the size difference between the two firearms. It's not a big difference, but there is a difference in size between these two firearms. From the top down view, the difference in slide length and barrel length is much more apparent. From the grip view, we can also see there is a little difference in the length of the grip between these two firearms. Let's take a close up on the grips here for a moment to see if we can try to show that size difference better. Hopefully that helps. Before we get to the conclusion of our video, let's first take a quick trip back to the range for a quick video segment that I thought was entertaining. Okay, let's start with the cheetah. Now we're using some browning 95 grain Full metal jacket, training plus practice ammo. Nothing special about it. I don't even know where it's going to hit on paper because I have not shot this ammo before out of this firearm. Let's see how we can do here. 20 shots or less. 
See if we can put a hit on the gong. I'll probably not do a double action shot. Here we go. Unless I hit it, then in which case we'll do a double action shot. Yeah, so I'm like, actually, we're kind of gone for like 20 minutes, you know? I'm like, really? You know? <laughs> Got it in our first shot. Miracle. I'm going to save you the experience of watching me try and fail for the next few minutes to duplicate that same performance with the 92FS and Compact. On the bright side, it means I was able to snap that picture of the gong to see where that round from the cheetah impacted. That gong is a 12 inch gong set up at 100 yards. I'd like to say I hit it a few more times, but nay nay. Just like we saw with our P365 380 before on camera. <laughs> First shot. And numerous times before with the G42, not on camera. A 380 is absolutely capable of making an accurate 100 yard shot. Would I do that outside of a range setting? Probably not. But at the range, for sure. Now let's get into the conclusion to today's video. I can already sense people will be commenting with something like, just get the 92, 9mm is better. We're not trying to say something like 380 is better than 9mm or go into the differences between velocity and stopping power. We have some other videos that briefly go into this topic if you're interested. We are going to briefly discuss a handful of areas that may help others decide which of these might be the best option of the three we've looked at today. For many people, that will be one of the 9mm choices, but not everyone. Let's start with the biggest difference, caliber. The ADX is chambered in 380 ACP. The 92 FS and 92 Compact are chambered in 9mm. The combination of it being 380 and the all metal frame, the ADX has the lightest recoil of the three. It is not 22 long rifle, no recoil light, but it is less recoil than the 9mm we fired today. That's not to say those 9mm firearms have punishing recoil. Far from it, in fact. Both the 92FS and the 92 Compact are what I'd consider heavy 9mm pistols, especially when compared to the polymer, striker-fired pistols that are extremely popular today. Those light polymer pistols have their own advantages, but one area where these metal heavy beasts win out is in lighter recoil. All that mass helps them absorb recoil very well. The ADX is in a similar boat in that 380 class. It's heavier than most 380s that are popular today, but that extra mass helps it absorb recoil well. One area you didn't hear me talk about when breaking down the numbers on these firearms is features. When it comes to things like attachment rails, optics ready, sights, etc., both the full size and the compact 92 have numerous configurations available at numerous different price points. As a result, you're likely to find a configuration with a set of features you like, but maybe not at the price your wallet does. Welcome to firearms ownership. With the ADX, currently, aside from finish, the setup you see here today is the only configuration available. Hopefully in the future we see a few more versions. I'd like to see one without the attachment rail and no optics ready slide. Do enough people want that such that Beretta makes one? Hopefully, but I have no idea. Now interestingly enough, on paper, the ADX is the widest of the firearms we've handled today, but I think that on paper value is misleading. I don't even think our pictures do a very good job of capturing the difference between these three in that regard. As I said on paper, the ADX is the widest, but in the hand, it's probably the narrowest. I think most of that has to do with the difference in depth grip, in the depth of the grip, and also that vertex grip style. The full size is the widest in the hand. It almost feels too wide to me. Everyone that I've shot that full size with has said something like, great gun, but I wish it wasn't so fat in the hand. The grip on the compact is just enough narrower 
with that subtle redesign of the Vertec grip to where it feels more in that Goldilocks zone for me. It's a very minor change, but a good example of how a small change can have a big impact. The ADX feels even smaller than that. It's not tiny in the hand, like say a Pocket 380 or a Micro Compact 380 might be for some, but it is smaller in the hand grip-wise than even the 92 Compact. For those who want the fatter grip but don't want the full size, the Vertec grip on both the 92X Compact and the ADX have replaceable panels and backstrap that can help make them wider. Speaking of grip, where I live, both the ADX and the 92X Compact come with 13 round magazines. The 92FS comes with 15 round magazines. As far as a 380 goes, 13 plus 1 is on the better side of capacity for at least what's available today. For 9mm, 13 or 15 plus 1 is starting to show its age. We're not a channel that is enamored with capacity, which is probably obvious with how we tend to load 10 rounds or less, but there are consumers out there where capacity is important. High capacity magazines are available for the 92 line. Now speaking of magazines, in our first range report I said the ADX couldn't use the 84 series magazines. That may not be correct. I haven't had a chance to test it myself, but multiple people have commented saying it worked for them without issue. Hopefully in the future we will be able to confirm this ourselves. Moving on. One noticeable difference between these firearms is in the style of safeties and decockers. On my 92FS I have the safety decocker. The compact has just the decocker. Uh, both of these are sweep down with the thumb style. They are easy to operate with either hand once you are familiar with them. The ADX has a safety decocker, but it is a sweep up with a thumb style. I find it's more difficult to operate. With my offhand, there are days where I can engage it and others where my thumb won't cooperate and I cannot get enough force on it to fully engage that docker decocker mechanism. This is a good example of one area where the ADX may struggle beyond price in the current 380 market. While the ADX handles recoil well and is a very mild shooting 380, there are some aspects of it that are not as accessible as other 380s now available on the market. Things like the Security 380 and Easy 380 have easier to manipulate slides, easier to use safeties, easier to load magazines, they're lighter, they have a spring setup that gives them very mild recoil, and they're much, much more affordable. For the people who shoot 380, not because they don't want a 9mm, but because they can't shoot one, those things are going to be some tough hurdles to jump, even with no brand loyalty. Now let's talk about a few other mentionables. As far as reliability, all three of these firearms have been 100% reliable for us. We have a couple thousand rounds through both the 92FS and the 92 Compact, and a little over 500 now through the Cheetah. I would say this level of reliability is expected. The ADX is sold as a new model, but the Cheetah line and the 92 family have both been available for decades now, never mind the well-documented service life and performance history they have. All three of these firearms have been extremely accurate. As we saw on video today, first shot at 100 yards with the ADX and we put a nice hit on that 12 inch gong. While I missed with the 92s today, in the past we have posted videos of us successfully hitting gongs at and past 100 yards with them. They're easily capable of it. When practiced, I would say with the 92FS, it's probably my most accurate shooter of what we shot here today. While I think it feels fat in the hand, when shooting it is a very comfortable shooter that gets back on target very easily. Of the three firearms shot today, it probably has the worst of the double action triggers, but that is easily overcome with some regular practice that I am out of it with. The compact I shoot almost as well as the 92FS. I'd call it a close second. If I didn't shoot them side by side, I'd say there's no difference in recoil, but there is a slight recoil advantage on the FS side. That makes sense with the FS being the little larger, heavier firearm. Of the three firearms shot today, the ADX has by far the best double action trigger. It's not custom shop good, but it's not far off either. From day one, it has been very accurate for me. I find that to be one of the biggest advantages of this Cheetah. For those who are looking for a single action, double action 380 pistol, the ADX has one of the most shootable double action triggers for any firearm that I've fired recently. 
The ADX is also the most concealable of the three firearms we looked at today. How one carries and how well that works for their body type, skills, etc. will be very person to person dependent. But in general, I would say for the majority of people, it won't be something that will disappear in a pocket. Being the smallest, lightest of the three firearms we looked at today, it will likely be the easiest for most people to carry of these three. Being larger, the other two firearms will be less concealable for most people, but there are still ways to conceal carry both. If you are able to shoot 9mm and you have a body type that allows you to carry one concealed comfortably, you probably will have no advantage to going to something like the ADX, especially as far as ammo prices go. In the 92 series, you have a more powerful 9mm round and a very capable firearm. If you are someone who either can't shoot 9mm or your body type won't allow you to comfortably carry a full size 9mm firearm, the ADX may be something to consider. Being slightly smaller, that size difference might be just enough to enable you to comfortably concealed carry one. While 380 doesn't have the same power of a 9mm, 380 is still an extremely capable round. Well, anyway, we hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a good day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So Freddy gets his biscuits.